Good morning, Vinyl Community, and this is the North Carolina Vinyl Picker. And I'm back from Johnson City. I went up there yesterday, had a nice time. Uh, it's about a two and a half hour, 2.20 uh, drive up there. And uh, it's just beautiful up there when you get up there. It's hard to explain. You go up over the uh, Appalachian Mountains and come down on the other side, and it's just gorgeous up there. But anyway, I had a really nice time up there, and I got a... Good size, uh, good size stack of wax. Now these will be going in next week. I'll be putting these on my show next week. I'm in the middle of a room organization here. I need to make some room. I need to expand out a little bit and uh, move some records around um, because I'm running out of room. I'm probably going to need another shelf. But that's for another show down the road. Um, I'm celebrating three years in the vinyl community and I uh, really uh, appreciate all of my subscribers, all 1,100 of you. And um, I see that more people that aren't subscribed to me watch me more than the ones that do subscribe for me. But if you go into your analytics, it really breaks it all down and tells you exactly what's going on. And uh, so there's going to be no balloons today, no hoopla, nothing like that. I'll probably just go out later give me some lunch somewhere and celebrate my three years in the vinyl community, <laughs> so to speak. So uh, this week here, we're going to talk about my top 10 albums from 1975. Now, there's going to be a couple in here that are kind of iffy. I'm not really sure if I was listening to these in 1975. But uh, yeah, I didn't include The Lamb before or Foxtrot or... Uh, nursery Crime or any of those records because I wasn't listening to those in 1975. But we're getting to the point in uh, being a junior in high school that I was starting to go out to concerts and stuff. So I'll tell you about those when I get to those records. So um, what should we do first? Should I show you the 10 records first or should I show you what I picked up first? So let's go ahead and let me show you what I picked up first. So this album here, this is the second album by this band that I had, Caldera. Now these guys here are very good. There's a jazz fusion funk record, and um, I really enjoy these guys. Um, kind of in the vein of uh, like Santana or uh, one of those type of bands. So uh, yeah, Caldera. If you get a chance, check out their records. They have a couple of them. I have another one over here. It's on the list. Caravan. If I could do it again, I'd do it all over you. This is their first album, and I was lucky enough to find a copy of this. And this is a repress, but uh, their first album to get one of these is very expensive. Uh, if it's an OG, so uh, I'm just settling for the repress. I found this one here online. I, it, was, it was like $15 or something, I said. It's the, uh, when Peter Gabriel came back in 82 and uh, joined up with Genesis to do a promotional thing that he needed some cash for, some quick cash. So he came on, they were on tour at the time. Genesis was on tour and, it, and uh, he joined them on stage and they did a reunion rehearsal. And uh, you can hear, uh, they were doing uh, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway and you can hear Phil say, uh, cut and then they went ahead and he said Peter start over again so uh yeah it was the rehearsal for the show for the one-off show that they did and Hackett it's not even on the original show or the was it the rehearsal or the show he he was late anyway late in getting there so he was only on the last two songs so there you go I didn't know that it tells you all about it in here there's a little uh, story in there that talks about it but it's, it's, it's kind of a rough listen, like most bootlegs are. And this I found out this was a bootleg, and uh, which I kind of figured out. But uh, my TV wanted to come on for some reason. Okay, so Fairport Convention. I've been getting into Fairport. And uh, I actually saw this record when I was over in Asheville at that record show a month ago. And um, I didn't pick it up. I should have at the time. But I found a guy that was selling a twofer online. He was selling this one and another one. And I picked it up. And uh, 
I'm just starting to get into Fairport Convention. I really like their music. And, uh, yeah, it's English folk music. Kind of in the vein of Straub's, but not as proggy. King Crimson Earthbound. It's one of the King Crimson albums I did not have. This has Boz Burrell later on went on to uh, play with Bad Company. And now he has since passed. But I saw Boz play with Bad Company down in Orlando. But uh, Earthbound, it's a live album. And uh, I'm going to give it a listen. It's off some tapes. So I'm not really expecting it to sound spectacular. But uh, I'm a completist when it comes to King Crimson and... Uh, yeah, so I wanted to get that one. There's another band that I've been getting into lately. Um, I like new music, and I like listening to new music. And when you listen to the, the Pentangle, these guys are very good. Uh, Bert Jantz and the rest of these people. This is their first album, so I'm expecting this one here to be really good. So hopefully when I play it, I will, I will really like it a lot. But again, like Fairport Convention... And some of these other bands I've been getting into, uh, these English folk bands. Um, yeah, really enjoy them. Enjoy them a lot. What's the other one? The other one is the Incredible String Band. Yeah, I got a copy of their album up here, The Hangman's Daughter. This is the new David Gilmore album. Everybody's been talking about it on the vinyl community. And I had mine uh, pre-ordered uh, from Amazon. It's the translucent sea blue vinyl. And uh, I've been screaming it uh, out there when I'm cutting the grass. And when I drove up to Johnson City yesterday, I streamed it. And uh, I really like it. But I'm all in on David Gilmore's uh, solo stuff. Matter of fact, I like Roger Waters and uh, the rest of them. Nick Mason's. Yeah, I like Richard Wright. I like all their solo stuff. Sid Barrett, I'm a little bit on the fence about. But, uh, yeah, I love the uh, Luck and Strange. There's some really good tracks on here. Um, his voice is getting pretty well shot. Um, yeah, I noticed that when he did the uh, Pompeii thing a few years ago, that his voice is just not good. Um, they need to do some auto-tune on that when he goes live. Uh, the album, he sounded good live. I mean, it sounded good live. He sounded pretty good on the record. But I saw a thing on YouTube yesterday, it's out there, where the um, he did the rehearsal for the upcoming tour. He's coming to the U.S. for a few dates, California and New York. And um, his voice is shot. But hopefully they'll do like an auto-tune thing when he's on stage. So he doesn't, I don't want to say embarrass himself, but it's just, it's not, it's not good. I don't know. John Anderson, 1,000 Hands. This is the album before the last album, before his recent album, True, which I showed you last week. I got it up on my wall here. But uh, John Anderson, 1,000 Hands. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one, too. This album is superior. His voice, now, for somebody who's 79 years old, his voice still sounds good. I don't know if that's from being a falsetto. Uh, if anybody out there in the final community knows, uh, just write your comment down below. And that's one thing I don't get. I don't get enough comments. So if you uh, you like my show, you don't like my show, uh, write a comment down there. Tell me what you'd like to see, what kind of shows you'd like to see, or what uh, albums you want me to show. I know I don't show very many CDs just because I'm selling all my CDs. Uh, they're in my store. I've been putting in uh, 20 to 30, sometimes 50 a week into my store and my store is on Discogs. It's, it'll be a link down below and then now uh, you go in there and you can find all kinds of stuff. You can find CDs and uh, mostly CDs now. Uh, there's some records in there. I have some vinyl records in there. When I upgrade, I put my old copy in there and I try to get rid of it and sell it and pass it on to somebody else. And uh, yeah, I have some Blu-rays in there and some DVDs and stuff. I'll be putting more of those in there as time goes on. I have a lot of movies and stuff I need to put on uh on ebay so yeah here we go you ready for the top 10 now the first one is a record that i was not listening to in 1975 but i should have been i was a junior in high school and i wasn't listening to hawkwind but i warrior on the edge of time is maybe maybe in my top 10 prog albums progiest prog albums of all time this album is just amazing and I got to the party late, 
but uh, yeah, about 50 years late. But uh, yeah, really enjoy that Hawkwind album. That's my one album that uh, didn't make the top 10. It's because it, I, will, I wasn't listening to it in 1975 and I just broke my thing where I said, because I didn't put the lamb in in 74 and I was thinking it came out in 75, but the copy I got over here and I says 1974. So that means they did sell in England and the lamb in the same year. That's the question of the day, I guess. Need to look, what to say? Google it, right? Okay, John will Google it for me. I know John is going to Google it for me. And then um, the second one I have in here, which is coming in at number 10. I'm going to show this one here at number 10, if I can find it. Now, I'm not real sure if I was listening to this one in 1975 as a junior. I don't think I started listening to this band until I met my buddy John. And I think that had to have been probably in 76 when I uh, was still in high school. So I'm not real sure on that. I had to, I had to check with him on that because uh, we met at the gas station. And uh, I'm not real sure what year that was. It had to have been just before I went in the Navy. So it had to be 1976. So, I was not listening to this band in 1975 as a junior, but he turned me on to PFM, which is an Italian progressive band on the Manator label, which was, uh, I believe, owned by Emerson Lake and Palmer and Pete Sinfield. Uh, he did some writing for them and did a solo album on that, which is really good. Well, well one song on the album is pretty good, <laughs> put it that way, The Sea Goat. But uh, this is a white label promo of this and Chocolate King's. Um, probably one of my top two favorite PFM albums. I, I love Chocolate Kings. I may have to give it a listen today. So these are no particular order. They're just my top 10 records of 75. Coming in at number two, Kansas Mask. This is a white label promo. And I've seen this band. I think I've told this story a hundred times. Um, I saw them live doing this tour the only time i got to see kansas and um, i saw them and believe it or not marshall tucker band opened for them at the capitol theater in new jersey so i must have seen them in 75 i probably still have the stub i need to put my stubs in the records for the band for the for the uh what they that they showed during that tour i think that's a good idea that's another job right put that on my list Okay, so then this album came out in 75, Physical Graffiti. And I remember buying this in 1975 because my niece was born. And uh, my mom, uh, somebody called me from the hospital to tell me that, that she was born. And uh, I had purchased this album that day. I had gone to the a record store close by my house. Must have been because I don't believe I was driving then. So I uh, probably rode my bike and I, I bought this album. And, uh, yeah, it was on that day. We didn't have Amazon back then, that's for sure. We didn't have cell phones. Didn't have much of anything, you know. Not what the kids have nowadays, that's for sure. Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here. Yeah, I was listening to Pink Floyd in 75. This was after Dark Side, and uh, everybody in high school was listening to Dark Side of the Moon. Um, didn't see Pink Floyd until way later, not till the Division Bell tour. But uh, this is... Uh, Half Speed Master. So there you go. Great album. Everybody knows the album. 1975. We're talking 1975 here. And this album I remember having as a junior in high school. That was Blow by Blow by Jeff Beck. So I was listening to Fusion early on. Real early on. Jean Luponti, Jeff Beck. Those were the two major. Aldi Miola. I'd say those were the top three I was listening to. As far as uh, fusion goes, and I was all in as a high school on jazz fusion, more so than some of the uh, prog bands. Like I, you know, in '75, I wasn't even listening to Genesis or a lot of the other ones. I don't believe I was listening to King Crimson either. Yes, I was listening to Yes, I believe I was listening to Yes, but not the other ones. Not you know, I didn't go down that huge rabbit hole of uh, prog until after. 1977 so jazz fusion was something i was listening to earlier and then before that or during that time i was listening to david bowie alice cooper 
Deep Purple, those type of bands, Mountain, they came to my high school, those type of bands, you know, the 70s classic rock bands, put it that way. I was all in on that because everybody in school was listening to Aerosmith. We were listening to all that stuff, Dream On. Those are all uh, big, big songs of that, uh, my high school days. But uh, I was listening to this guy too. So maybe it's because I heard the Mahavishnu Orchestra I was telling you about early on. David Bowie, I was listening to Bowie. I was a big Bowie fan and Young Americans came out that year. And I really enjoyed uh, listening to Bowie. And uh, John Lennon was on this album as well. He has a Cross the Universe. He does a, a, a copy of that with uh, Bowie. And that's uh, really, really good. And uh, Yeah, so we're about halfway now. We're more than halfway. These are just 10 of my albums that I was listening to in 1975. I didn't put them in no particular order. Here's another one. Uh, my friend John told me I was listening to this in 1975. But I wasn't listening to Genesis. Why? I don't know why. Uh, this came out in 75. And maybe it was the album cover. I don't know. But I, I believe I had a copy of it. I would have had because there was no streaming back then. You know, there was eight tracks. And uh, cassettes weren't even around then. I don't believe. They came in soon after this, though. The 80s was all about cassettes, I think. Late 70s, 80s. So... Voyage of the Acolyte, anyway. Steve Hackett's first solo album. He did this album while he was still with Genesis. He wouldn't have leave Genesis until, what, 77 after Wind and Weathering Tour? Seconds Out Tour, that's when he uh, departed. And uh, But Voyage of the Acolyte, there's some members of Genesis on this. Phil Collins is on here. Mike Rutherford is on here. I don't think Tony participated. But yeah, Voyage of the Acolyte. Got two left, 1975. Next week we'll be doing my uh, 1976, the year I graduated. And then I'm, I might just continue this on. I have a lot of people saying, hey, why don't you just keep going, you know? We get to uh, 1980 and then do the 80s and then the 90s. I'm just going to keep on going until this year coming up. And I got a new contender now. I got that new David Gilmore album that this might just bump John Anderson's album off the top one, but we'll have to wait and see for that because my I won't be doing my top 10 for another couple months. It's, you know, this month's already, it's almost the middle of September. It's getting there. Crisis, what crisis? You know, going to say, all right, are you having a crisis here? Big Chief, you having a crisis? What? 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 No, I'm not having a crisis. But this was their fourth album, Super Tramp. And uh, probably... You know, everybody's probably loves the album before this one, Crime of the Century. But uh, there's, a, there's a couple songs on here that just, you know, they just gravitate to me. And this is my favorite Super Tramp album. I've been saying that for years. Uh, Sister Moonshine, Ain't Nobody But Me, this is a soapbox opera. Oh my gosh, this is a great album. I need to have to spend, I think I need to spend these top 10 records from 1975 today. Today. Go Yankees. Yeah. We're going to the World Series this year. You better believe it. You better believe it. We're going to struggle and let's keep right on going and we're going to stumble in. Yeah. We're in first place. We're in first place with Juan Soto and Mr. Judge. Okay. Enough of the Yankee talk. Ghost Straubs. My favorite Straubs album. I love Grave New World. So if you ask me tomorrow, it might be Grave New World. But uh, today, I'm going to say Ghost. You know, the Life Auction. Ghost, Lemon Pie. Oh my gosh, this is such a great album. I might have to spend this one too. I bet you I've played this album in my lifetime a hundred times. Maybe 105. I don't know, something like that. So, welcome to me. Three years in the VC. Hey, it rhymed. And... Uh, I enjoyed every every episode. There's over 400 episodes of me, believe it. You know, if you want to go back, you can watch all 400 and um, spend the whole day with the picker and just one after the other. Next week, we're going to do the uh, Johnson City Hall. So I won't be going out and buying any records this week. And I don't have any coming in the mail. So it's going to be a sparse week. So I'm going to have to come up with a big time show for next week. I'm going to be showing you my top 10 records or 10 records from 1976 that the big chief was listening to. 
So that's about all I got for today. Um, yeah, that's about it. So take care. And everybody out there, thank you everybody for subbing up my channel. I, sub I appreciate all my subscribers. And I'm looking forward to getting to 2,000. But it'll probably take me another five years. But that's okay, you know. Just a little engine that could. And if you like my show, sub me up. Hit the bell and all that stuff. And that way you'll know what time the North Carolina Vinyl Picker will be back. And it's free. It don't cost nothing. What the hell is free these days? Nothing. That's free. I'm free. I'm coming to you for free. There you go. All you got to do is have a cell phone. Turn it on or watch me on TV. Watch me on the big screen. Get it. Go out today. I want you to everybody stop what you're doing right now. Check your funds. Go out to the store. I want you to go to Best Buy or Walmart, wherever you buy your TVs, and get the biggest freaking TV you can find. 108 inch, 124 inches, whatever it is. Okay? You know where I'm going with this. Set it all up. Get some popcorn. Get your favorite beverage. You know, if it's a beer, you know, you want to get a big old plate of like sausage and cheese and stuff like that. And then if, uh, if it's going to be a soda, you know, you get some popcorn and you can sit there and get them get in your recliner, get your, get your, your sweetie with you or who, your significant other, get a, get your favorite pet, you know, get all set up, get everything all set up, kick back in your chair, turn it on for the first time on those 180 inch TV and you could watch the picker all day long, 409 episodes. Yeah, it's like a third year anniversary special. You could just sit there all day long and watch it. And then people be coming and going all day and saying, you know, what are you doing? I'm still watching The Picker, man. I'm still watching The Picker. He's my favorite freaking channel. Yeah. Oh, I just woke up from a dream. Hey, we'll talk to you soon. North Carolina Picker, I got to get out of here. I got stuff to do. So we'll be talking to you later. I got to move all these records around and moving all this stuff around. I'll give you a new room tour when I'm done. How about that? I know you're excited. 22 minutes in, I'm out of here. Support them troops more than now than ever. They need their help. And I'll be talking to you soon. North Carolina Vina Picker. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out.